is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Let's just run this real quickly. Crude oil right now is up 70 cents, spiked very sharply. The other day, I forgot to put the continuous contract high in. That was 63.14 on the 16th. Here we go. 63.14. Good grief. What a week. Was that Monday? Yeah, Sunday night was the with big skyrocketing up. And then Monday, it opens up huge. Goes to 63.14, trading right now at 58.89. But here's the issue. Speaking about this all week, I said if there's a pullback in crude oil and the 200 period moving average of 58.15 is not pierced on a closing basis but turns out to become support, be careful because we could very quietly see 50, what did I say? I said 58 and a half, then 59 and a half, 69 and a half. 63 and a half. And wait a minute, suddenly you're at a new recovery high, targeting the 63.80 weekly orange 200 period thick moving average line right there. And the MACD is cross positive. It's Friday and it's already cross positive again. That's a good sign. Stochastic's not so good in the weekly at 48%. The MACD in the daily is very strong. Stochastic's very weak at 59. This is a mixed market, but it's not going to take very much for crude oil instead of plummeting down back into the 55, 54 area to at least, see, let's just do this. The reason why I'm a little bit cautious here this is the first time we've actually started to implement short positions. We've been long for ages, actually implemented a brand new long, as I mentioned uh, uh, the other day, about three days ago. Uh, bought, a, bought a stock that I've loved for a long time, um, and then it, has, it was just one of the great winners of 2019, and then it became a big loser of 2019. But I love the way it came back, and I said, this is one we've missed so many times. I like it. It's in a... In, it's kind of under the radar. It kind of helps in the health care. It isn't directly health care. So um, we're going to go long. And only if it pulls back, because it was and just two points to go to the previous, not all-time high, but the previous high that was our upside target. So I said, let's just wait for a pullback, because we want at least two points to the upside if we're going to take a risk at all. But if it really breaks that, that's going to be really good, even though it's leg D coming up if it doesn't. Well... We got in the price that we wanted, uh, close to $76. It's trading right now at $78.58. Today it's up 51 cents, up 0.56%, uh, 66%, um, when the general market is really kind of lagging. It's not doing that much. So that's the kind of thing I'm looking for. Now, do I want to get out of our long positions? I prefer not to, because these long positions were really carefully chosen. I mean, one we've had since December, the, the, the dollar we've had since April of last year. I don't want to change anything there. Uh, the broker-dealer index that we've had since uh, 60 is at 66, up 10 percent. That should be vulnerable. It hasn't been particularly vulnerable right now. It's doing very nicely. You know, we've got some interesting things going on here. I don't really want, want to make a change. I can lighten up, and that's what I think we will do if, if certain stops are hit. I just don't want to be... Tell the market I know more than you. I, I do not know more than the market. I know a lot but not anything close to what the market, the, those elves, those market guys, remember I always chuckle about it, when you take your hands off the wheel to pat yourself on the back, that's when you hit the tree. And I don't want to be, uh, there's no brav bravura here. This is a very nervous moment because I've got so many peak Ds and even Es that in dailies that should pull back. So far they've held. I'm ready. That's all I'm saying to subscribers. We know we're ready, but we are starting to implement some kind of a precautionary stance. Okay, so that's crude oil. But wait a minute, TLT. The TLT right now is up 58 cents. Got stuck right on. This is the reason why I move. I use moving averages. A lot of people say you only need volume. Oh, you only need Fibonacci. You only need uh, um, yeah, GAN theory. Oh, Chapman wave. No. 
I need the panoply of all the techniques that I've developed over the years. And one of them is to use the 9 and 14 period moving averages. Pink, because it's coming down, it's crossed negative over the 14 here in the TLT. 148.90 was the high in on the 28th of August. Plummets down to 130. I say plummets because that's 12 points. 12 points in, even though it went up sharp, it's still a, a, a big pullback. But it did rally. But it doesn't stall and doesn't start to come down here as rates go higher, as the general market stalls itself, because right now it's going sideways, but it's only it's days, it's a week that it's been going sideways. That's nothing. So what I'm looking at here is if the TLT, if bond yields plummet, because the TLT skyrockets once more and goes from the 140 up four points by next Wednesday into the 130, 143.50, 144.50 area. I don't know. That's going to talk, tell, talk very seriously to the issue of bonds and bond yields. And look, the TNX, the chart itself, TNX, which is the... Uh, the 10 year, which I'll show my subscribers to my opening call every weekend, I show them, discuss it, isn't moving very much higher. So it does start to pull back because the TLT is going to start to move higher again, or does it break above? Uh, it's trading right now at, uh, let's see, I, I, a good question coming up here. I'll deal with that. 77 up three. It's it's really not showing much strength now. So if today it was at 18.12, 8.12, I say, hey, let's keep that in mind. TLT, I think, is going to be pulling back and yields are going to be going higher. I just, it's really difficult to say right now. There's a whole cross current coming up that, uh, probably over the weekend by Monday or Tuesday. We'll have much more clarity. Just let me tell you the numbers that I'm looking at. Forget the TNX. Let's go to the TLT. The TLT right now at 140.56. If there is a close by Monday afternoon or Tuesday above 142.15, as soon as that, in other words, Monday, bond, bonds push much higher and yields come down. That's going to speak to an issue of the yield factor is still an important part of our market right now. If instead the TLT starts to pull back and there's a certain normalcy here because the yields start to rally, I'd like the yields to rally a little more. I don't see any reason why they shouldn't. That's going to mean something else. However, if the TLT rallies, yields come down, we might see that money goes into bonds and out of the stock market. So here's a real mixed picture. How do you put this all together? I have to look at chart patterns. I'm focusing on the Dow, the S&P, the Qs, the SMHs. Let's do that. And right now, the SMH is the semiconductor index, kind of stalling at a peak E at 123.13. Couldn't get above the 123.56 level before a D and an E, and, and it's it's. If it goes higher than this, I have to think of it as maybe a new buy signal to buy mode, but the technicals are good. The price is just not acting all that well right here. Not bad, but not well. So let's just make the numbers again. It's tra SMH trading at 120.70. If the SMH starts to pull back and go and closes any day this coming week underneath 119.60 is the 14 period moving average. If it closes on 118.65, Semis have gone into a, a sell signal with probably a sell mode coming up. That's important to the cues. I'll be right back. That's what Chapman Tiger did. If you're not currently using the TAS profile scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today, and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today.
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi folks, we're back. And uh, Jane the Den asked me if I had a, a low trend indicator early this morning. You know, I always look for that on options expiration. Once every five months, well, I, I, maybe I, I should say once every eight months, the trend is really low because of options expiration, and we don't get the Dow pullback the very next day to negative. It's happened twice in the last, I'd say, year, maybe 18 months. But most of the time, we do get a negative Dow the following day. And I got it very low reading this morning on the trend. So my trend indicator is flashing. And I have to apologize to subscribers completely, even though I made the correct call about two days ago. Every day on my Dow, well, I never tell you really what I do for subscribers. Every day I make a call on the Dow. I give a, a, a Chapman Wave rotational uh, analysis, very detailed of the 120-minute chart and the, and the daily chart. Um, as well as every day I send here into the den, as well as to subscribers, uh, a, an, an analysis of the daily, weekly, and 120-minute chart of the e-mini, whatever is the current month. And then I do a very uh, detailed report on any stocks that are of interest that we either have or um, would like to get, or that's just very important to look at. And uh, then I, my trader's corner gives a little a brief paragraph, about four lines to eight, six lines, just a, a kind of a wrap of exactly where we are, what we're looking at, why we're looking at, what we've got, what we're looking, you know, just, it's just real quick, quick detail. For those of you who just want to get it and go off to work or whatever you do, you don't have time. I don't even know if people have time to read everything. It takes me so long to, to, to write this because I type every single thing. There's, uh, the note, there's nothing notated except what you get on any platform. All my notations are written in by, by me. And one of the reasons is because there are alternate counts. And I haven't yet found a way of notating automatically the alternate counts because some of it's so visual, you can see it in a split second. And some of it will maybe will be picked up by the computer a lot better by, by the program. But mostly I just see it visually and I in a split second. And then imagine you see it in a split second. I know by by the, already today, I pretty much know what I'm talking about for Monday. Now I have to write the whole thing out. I could make this like a, a newsletter with not even a page, just our positions, nothing else, just the positions, what we want, and a, just a brief synopsis. But I teach it's a teaching tool. So that's what I do every day. So my trend gauge, my short term, my, my uh, this is Richard Arms. 
this is his, uh, let me show you right here. Let me get it. Uh, where can I go? Okay, here. It's his trading index. It's called, right now, the official title is uh, New York Stock Exchange, uh, the Trend Index. So it's Richard Arms' uh, development of uh, his uh, short-term trading index. And, wh and what he does, he looks at, for different, uh, it's the, I believe it's the higher, the high subtracted from the low plus the volume, up volume and the down volume, but I, of certain uh, group of stocks. I don't look at it that way. I only look at it as, as numbers, and I've done this for decades. I don't even know how long I've done it. So it has nothing to do with what he says. Um, I've heard him talk about it so often. I've heard him say such and such, and then I said, "Gee, that's not what I'm getting." So I use it completely differently to the to the maker. He probably uses it in his own way perfectly. I I, I just don't. I use it in a completely different way. It's just another tool in the huge toolbox, the Sears and Roebuck toolbox for the Chapman Wave methodology. So it gave me a reading on Tuesday, I believe, intraday that I didn't see until Wednesday evening. And it said that Wednesday should be uh, should see a down session. Um, and I think it was Wednesday. It was Wednesday or Tuesday? Anyway, I, I missed one. Uh, it was there, and I forgot to tell subscribers, and it was a correct call uh, by the by the trend gauge. So I call it the Chapman Wave trend gauge, but it's really a Richard Arms' index, and I only use it for certain numbers: a very high reading and a very low reading, and that's it. So let's just get back to what I was looking at here. I'm going to come back to some of the charts. I had a couple of questions. Let me see. Um, the question was: Do the do the the exact wording is the monthly candles on the indices have to complete at least a peak D. No, that is in the Chapman Wave methodology. If you go from a buy signal to a buy mode, and my monthly chart is in a buy mode in the SMHs and the peak B, that should go to a leg C. It doesn't give you time. Other things give you time. It only gives you the notation that in a buy mode, look, there's a peak D at 114.55, March in monthly chart, March of 2018 in the semiconductor index, SMH is at 140.55, plunged to $80.71 in December, and then ran up and made a new recovery high, even now, way above the 114s at 120.75. Peak F, 123.56 in the SMHs, so, uh, July 24th down to 107s, that's a deep correction, runs all the way up to, an, to almost a new high, it misses it. It goes to 123 in 13, 30 seconds on August, uh, September the 9th. Let me put that in as a date. And when it does that, you just say, how does it know to stop below the previous high? But it did it in a peak E, and that says to me, just be careful here because if you don't go to a new high at a peak C or even a D, but you still get to an E and you haven't made it, you could be in for a little bit of a digestive phase, and that's kind of what I'm looking at right now. But the week, the MACD is still good, stochastic is still good at 85%. There can be pop-ups as well. Now, I want to do a couple of other things. Um, uh, I, I, I don't know where I stopped. Did I do? Let me just do this real quickly. The Dow IND is up 62. It's in this cup, look, this, this cup and handle, not a cup and ladle, Chapman Wave cup and ladle just powers right through that left side high and, and continues to at least a D and an E before it comes back, retests the high, um, the lip, left side lip. This is stored right here. So, yes, you can go high. I, I, 27,154, even if we go higher, we'll be back at 27,154 with this particular pattern. Unless there's a spectacular breakout next week, who knows what it could be going into the 27,500s. I have to then admit, wow, that is really good action. All right, quickly, uh, S&P, just give you parameters. I can't remember if I did it or not. S&P stuck a little bit, has 29.97, the nine period exponential moving average support is at 3,010, has a lot of resistance, as I said to subscribers, 3,019, to 22 is going to be a very strong resistance today's high. So far, it's 2016, and that's on the shorter term. And the QQQ and the X100 actually down sharp and now down 74 cents at 192.11. I'm looking at some of these, and I'm saying it's not good that you've got your FANG stock starting to uh, deteriorate in, in the technicals. And I don't mean just FANG. I mean the, the whole group of those leaders, early leaders, 
um, I'm just not doing all that well. A question about Roku. I have to congratulate Bob. Bob had called me in, Bob from Framingham, and he also had sent me an email, and I discussed it on air, about Roku. He wanted to trade for the 177 <laughs> calls i mean the calls that he had i don't know what he had like 170 or something and he was trading them to go to 177 i think he said 177 the high all-time high was 176.55 in a leg f peak f plunges and i saw this coming and i said to my even before i was talking about netflix being a problem child in the fang area I, I just didn't put a position on it. It was just there were so many other things we were looking at, including continuing the long positions, that I just I ignored it. But wow, 176 to the low right now of 111 in Roku, down 22, just today alone. Oh, I would say that that is a come up as a peak F in the month in the weekly chart. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Now, well, folks, look, we're back. So let's do this. We want to look at dollar. The dollar's just been in a trading band for quite a while, but holding really well, uh, meaning it hasn't broken under 98. Right now, it's at 98.61, the continuous contract, that weekly chart, holding nicely. MACD's good. Stochastic's okay at 75%. I'd be much more comfortable if it was over 80%. And that monthly chart, I, wow, do you think there's going to be a doji candle here for the month of September and then a pullback as gold maybe rallies next month? I'm not sure. I think the way I'm looking at gold right now is that this peak E, 
in the weekly chart with the peak F in the uh, Chapman wave at 1566.2 in the uh, daily chart, this rectangle, if we close underneath 1480 on the continuous contract, then there's a chance that we I always do this very conservatively. I have a Chapman wave right here. It's called the Chapman wave parallel one to one extension. What the heck does that mean? Now, most of my titles to all my uh, techniques, they are, uh, how can I put it? They are descriptive. So if I call it uh, drop bucket pattern at the double top that was right there, uh, that, there's a reason for that because it looks like a backhoe that uh, grabbed all this, the, the dirt, lifted it up, and then just dumped it. That's what the backhoe does. So you got this cup formation or bucket formation drops the price. If that's the case, then you can get a one-to-one -to, -one to the 14... 50, 52 area if 14 if we close under 1480 I'd like to say on a weekly basis I don't think it needs to be on a weekly basis you just got to establish that this whole area of the 9 and 14 period moving average in the 15 10 15 uh, 13 area is very strong resistance going down Magni's going down stochastics running but very weak and that, that's the way I'd look at it how could it change well this lowercase h pattern right here Oh, slightly lower low. We're actually in, in a trough B. Uh, suggests that if there's going to be a rally, I wouldn't give it more than Thursday afternoon or next week. It has to be trading above 1528, preferably into the 1538 area. And then I have to turn around and say, you know what? This is the big test for the dollar. This is the test for the euro. We'll go there in a minute. And gold is starting to show strength because the stochastic showed a, a, a positive divergence. MACD was flattening out, and now they can turn up. And the MACD in the weekly chart never went negative. That's why so far I'd have to see what happens at the end of the day today, whether I'm going to put a down arrow to say sell signal in the weekly chart. I have a sell mode in the, in the daily. But I haven't got that yet. Why? It hasn't yet even closed below the nine period moving average, the green line of 1493. It hasn't seen the MACD cross negative. And the stochastic still at 80% and not down to the 76% area. I can't do that. I can put a red plus sign and just say, hey, I can even put a question mark saying, this is on my watch list. I can't do it. And technically, I can't do it. Okay. Silver, SI, silver right now. Not trading uh, anywhere close to good. It's just stuck in this range. It's down 0.3 uh, at 1784. If silver closes on a two-day basis, not a one, but a two-day basis, below below of the 15th, 13th was 17.47. If it closes under 17.20 for two sessions, Silver could also do a one-to-one, -one, but here I'm much more conservative. I take it from the 1975 top to the 1745-47 low, and then I started all the way up from the 12th. Uh, I love that. There goes a little, like a little motor, motor, motor thing with a, maybe a 50cc engine. The sound is so familiar. It takes me back to my teen years when I used to race one of these things. Um, I still got the scars to show it. And listen to him. Oh, struggling up this hill. I'm on a hill. Um, ah, takes me back. All right, enough with that. Um, so let's see. 17.84. Uh, Silver is stuck. High-grade copper, HG, right now is also kind of stuck in the lower end of the middle part of the range. No, in the middle end of the range uh, at 2.610. At any point in the next two months, if you see silver, uh, high-grade copper trading the 2.76 area, I think the FXI, China index, will be, instead of 40.70, will be at 42.85. I think that would be a good sign. Right now, they're both kind of stuck. All right, next thing is, uh, let's do this. I want, should I do that now or should I do the next segment? I wanted to talk about what I'm looking at in the Chapman Wave methodology uh, in my Dow charts, etc. No, no, I want to do one other thing right now. I had a question about uh, this, uh, the, 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 um, 
steel stocks. So SLX is up 14 cents at 35.01. It's done nicely, but it doesn't look dissimilar to the FXI, the China 25 ETF. It doesn't look dissimilar to it. Let me see the EEM. Yeah, they're all kind of the same, except the EEM has gone to a peak, E with a doji high, holding actually not, not badly at all. Uh, let's see. So there it is. And now it's gone to this high of E. EEM is the iShares Emerging Market Index. Uh, I'm still putting a red one here. I can't yet put a, a, a down arrow. So I just wanted to touch that to say, <clears throat> when looking at the, the different components the reason why I'm becoming a little nervous is, was that politically incorrect? Yeah. The reason why I'm getting a little nervous is because um, I, there are so many areas that are showing a rotation where select stocks are doing well. For instance, we have a stock right now, as I said earlier, that's doing really well. It's up nicely today. Um, when the general market's in a malaise, and it's done that for the last couple of days, regardless of the market. I don't think that's going to continue, but it's doing it now. So if you look at, say, my, my um, Dow Quartet, let's go there right now. So we've got Caterpillar. Caterpillar didn't go to a leg D, not yet. It's trading quite nicely, but <clears throat> not today. Today it's down. Oh, it's unchanged now. 130.12, went to a peak C. Uh, we're actually long this from the 100 and right there, 120, 122.49 area. It hit 133.69. I would say that's a pretty darn, darn good rally in a short period of time. Now it's giving a little bit of it back, uh, holding the 200 period moving average. Will there be a rotational strength coming up to go to a leg D in the 134s? I don't know. And this is a counter trend rally because the major trend has been lower lows and lower highs. So that's Caterpillar. IBM, I haven't done the update in the last couple of days. Yep, peak C1, peak C2, holding okay, uh, not doing anything great. It's up 61 right now at 143.58, but holding reasonably well. That's good. Uh, Triple M had a nice rally off the lows of the 153s, goes all the way to the 173s. Uh, now at 168 peak C, trying to move towards another uh, slightly higher high in this whole industrial cyclical rotational area. Uh, you know, look at that monthly chart. That is terrible. And UTX, uh, let's see, 139.40 was the high peak D. It's kind of weakening now, but uh, price-wise, at the high end of the range, high level consolidation. Hey, the MACD is good. Stochastic's pulling back, but still at 85%. But their weekly chart says, hey, this is a really good move. Maybe you need a little time to consolidate. So I'm looking for the market to continue this consolidation. And now I can explain exactly what I'm looking at. The Dow's up 30, the S&P's up 0.30. Why do I think that's important? Oh, just in time. The next chapter will continue in a couple of minutes after this very important TFNN break. The products that you need. I'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%.
Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Hi, right, folks, we're back. Dow's up uh, 29, S&P's up 0.55. Look at this. Remember in Chapman Wave, we talked about arch and cup formations. This is from the trough that was made right at 8.30. You got peak A, peak B, peak C, peak D, extension E, uh, some kind of oh, opening, uh, up and down, and it comes back to up. Gray A, because it never made a new high, I should have made enough time to make that an A. And then it goes to peak F, and the MACD turns out stochastic only goes briefly above 80% and then down. I don't like that at all. On balance volume, blue line turns down. And you've got um, a whole bunch of, of other indicators that are suggesting that there could be a, a cup formation. And what do we do? We get that cup formation, but on the second test of the cup right here, let me do a vertical line there and there look at the strength right there everything was on the upside in this rally you don't get that strength it goes back almost to the same price but it can't get there and technicals are saying whoops be careful comes back now makes another cup formation it makes a form of sine wave move. look cup arch cup failure arch failure arch failure a v-shaped pattern almost like a cup can't come back, can't get back to a new high, makes a double bottom, and right here is the first time you're starting to see some kind of support level that suggests that maybe here you could have a little bit more of a rally attempt. So this is exactly at a 3009, a break under 3007 says, no, 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 you're not yet, baby. This is not good. But right here it says there's a chance that you can get from the 3009 to test the 311, 312 area, moving averages. Uh, we'll see. Okay, that's enough with that. Now, let's go to this. <clears throat> In the Chapman Wave methodology, what we look for is from a buy signal to a buy mode, there's an implication that you're going to go to at least a D. Here's the H pattern that we were looking at and was successful. It went to a lower H, and that says you can rally. If you've gone to left side, lower than the left side low of 25,449, went to 25,339, but there's a really good chance that until the technicals really give a good buy signal, all you can do is rally in another H formation to go from a lowercase h to a lowercase m. Remember, this is not here mathematical because I'm very visual. I've developed this all on the visuals. I came to, to, to charting through the visuals. Uh, I had been at some point 
uh, um, I don't even know what the term would be, like a cartoonist, you know, in your newspaper, you've got your op-ed page, and on the op-ed page, they'd have letters to the editor or comments or, or correspondence that um, they've, they have written in, uh, commentaries. So I used to do those little illustrations, little cartoons and illustrations. I did it with the Boston Globe for a long time. Um, and I used to do, I used to just send them in, knowing what the topics would be, or hearing a topic and then just instantly drawing it in. And uh, this all goes all the way back. If you remember the AT&T breakup, I was doing it then. I had a cartoon that had a little guy going, chop, chop, chop. It had a big uh, uh, AT&T sign, and chop, 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 until just the letter T was left, the breakup. Anyway, things like that. Um, like you see in the New Yorker, that type of thing. So anyway, so I come to this visually. <laughs> the point was that I come to this very visually. Um, oh, that was why I was a professional musician and I had my, uh, I had a newsletter. Uh, so this is what we're looking at here. At 27,132, up 37, the MACD is still very strong, but it's starting to flatten out. And if you look at the histogram, the histogram is starting to fade just a little bit. Look at the stochastic. It was all the way in the 96% area. Now it's at 86, still very good. But wait a minute. Let's go to that, that, the instruments that I always talk about. Is that here? No, that's not. That's a completely different. Oh, did I lose those? Yep, I think I lost them. I think I, I, I lost them. All right, I'll find them. So I wanted to show you the crossover, so I'll do it on this chart right here. No, no, yeah, I'll do it on the crossover. So what we're looking at here is you see the green line, Chapman Wave, uh, one of the methodologies is to use the 9 and the 14 period moving averages. I've spoken about this forever. Uh, sometimes I, I always use the 9, but um, the 14 period has been altered over the years. But for uh, maybe five, six years now, it's been 14 periods that I like. This is what I choose. You can choose anything you want. Just be consistent. And what that says is, look what happened back in, in uh, July the 16th at 27,398. You remember we were in short right there, seven points from the all-time high? That day, because of the little doji candle beforehand, and I thought there could be an alternate count that took you to a D. So, yeah, we got that D. Uh, there was an alternate count which was confirmed as a D with another doji candle. But wait a minute, the mag D was good. The stochastic had made an M shaped pattern and was not even tilting down yet. Let me do a straight line right here. So, that said to me, right here. And that said to me, very good action, but there's a good chance that based on the 120-minute chart, based on the DOG, based on other factors, that at this D with a doji, if there is another doji candle, and then there's a close underneath the doji candle the very next day, or at least two, not, not more than two days later without making a new high, we could start to move down. It didn't say how long. So look what happened. It started to move down. I'm getting these beautiful signals and then it retests and misses the high of 27,398, comes back, but holds the 14 period moving average, goes back again, back again, and then suddenly you get this really ugly candle around about the uh, 29th, 30th of, of July, and that confirms everything. But look, the MAGD took a long time. It started to come down. The price didn't even know that it was coming down. Stochastic was fading horribly at the retest. It was terrible. And yet the price was stubbornly high. I'm, and now look what's happened. We've got a peak D doji candle, this time followed by another inside bar, tiniest, uh, tiniest um, range in the Dow forever. I mean, for, just all the way back to that, that uh, period of July. And now we've gone down. We've touched the nine period moving average. We haven't even got close to the black line, the 14 period moving average. The MAGD hasn't yet even crossed even thought about crossing negative. The stochastic's at 86%. There is nothing here other than the Chapman Wave methodology of certain techniques to say there should be a massive decline. There's nothing yet to say there should be a decline under the 26,913 level of the MACD, uh, of the 14-period um, moving average right there. So what am I using to say there's a potential for some kind of a top? I'm using other techniques, and the techniques I'm using still rely on the fact that I need to see a close below 27,038. 
That's the line period moving average, the green line. Not good enough. That would just be one sign. Then I'd have to see a close below 26,913. We're at 27,138. I would say to get this fast moving average, the green line, to close under the slow black line, it's going to take at least a 330 point decline in the Dow, either speed or over a period of just lower lows and lower highs. It'll take all the way to next Friday before you can even get that. That's why I'm saying this is a very important week. I don't want to be too aggressive about anything, but my eye says we're getting really close to the opportunity for the bears to have another brief moment. And how brief, I'm not sure, but a moment. They will fail if this Dow climbs with the other indices climbing as well into the 27,000. I'm certain fund. you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls to sign up today if you haven't checked out the newsletters page of tfnn.com what are you waiting for all of the tfnn newsletters are informative up-to-date affordable and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets tfnn newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge heard here at TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is the difficulty. You can see all our positions, and what I can see in front of me now, I might be wrong, but all our positions are up right now. The Dow's barely up 43 points. The S&P is struggling. It's up too. I, I, it's going to be tough to make decisions here because I'm starting to see signs of wear, but I'm, I'm also si seeing signs of, of residual strength. Look, this is the first time the S&P has shown me the 10-minute chart is 3,005 key support automated, the automated 29.95 to 29.91, then 29.80 in the 120-minute chart. Nothing in the daily. The Dow shows uh, automated Chapman Wave support levels for the first time in a while. Look, 27,113, we're at 27,140. And then it goes down to 27,005 and 26,958. I think this trading range is going to continue a little longer and it's going to be later in the week that there's suddenly something that either triggers the move to the 
27,500 in the Dow, or it starts to trade very comfortably under 26,900. And that'll be a bit of a change, you see? So I, 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 this is where I'm being careful. Okay, a couple of things I wanted to finish up here is the pattern. Look, you've got your cup and handle, but look, it's a double cup and handle. It's almost like a, let me squeeze this again. Yeah, you've got your left side, Right here, it's not exactly, but it's got a, like a, something like a, a, a handle. Then you've got your big, even another little handle here before you made the cup formation. Very unusual formation. I actually prefer to think of this as the rectangle formation that can go close to, right on, or just above the previous high, and then it pulls back, and then you've got to do a different analysis. That's kind of where we are, sideways in even the smaller replication of patterns. I showed you the other day, two different patterns, how they were repeating, and it was such a surprise. There were different instruments. Look at this, cup and handle. But you've got a little mini cup. It could even make a little handle there. So sideways, I think. And that's what I'm looking at. And yet, today I say to subscribers, I would not be surprised if we see a narrow close in the Dow. Let's see what happens today. Options expiration. But we've already got a signal in the Chapman methodology. If it's going to be one of those times, one of the 96% of the time that it works, will we get a down open? or down early in the morning on Monday or a spiral high? That's the question. Have a wonderful day. Please check out my opening call, my daily newsletter. I'll be up here right for the next uh, for the next 1 p.m. update. Otherwise, have a great day. Stay tuned for Steve, Dave, and Tom.